Welcome to our podcast, Inspiring Living, with me, Mark Candelaria. I am an architect, blogger, traveler, chef, father, and husband. I am the founder and now a partner of a fabulous 25-person architecture firm specializing in high-end residential architecture, designing amazing homes across the country. We have hosted tours to Italy, Spain, and now Napa over the last 20 years. And in the course of all this, I have met a lot of interesting people who truly inspire me. Our podcast is about all the opportunities that are right there in front of us to inspiring living. Yes, we will talk about architecture and design, but every week we will venture to all sorts of topics that will inspire you, teach you, and motivate you to inspire living every day. My guests will include a wide gamut of amazing people from those in the design industry to clients to real estate professionals, chefs, artists, sports figures, and philanthropists, and people who just flat out get it. Sit back and enjoy, and let's have some fun exploring all the opportunities that are there just waiting for us. Please subscribe and get ready to be inspired every week. Okay, as my dad says, here we go. Because Inspiring Living is all about the people and the organizations that inspire us, we are excited to have Monogram Appliances as one of our sponsors. Anytime we do a new kitchen or a kitchen remodel, Monogram Appliances are what we recommend to our client. Their appliances are the definition of luxury, meticulously detailed using the finest materials and an ownership experience that is second to none. This is how Monogram is always thinking ahead and inspiring and elevating the kitchen experience. Because at Monogram, they don't just elevate one thing, they elevate everything. Welcome everybody. We are recording on March 24th, 2020. We are in quarantine mode here at Casa Candelaria. But I do have one guest who uh, kind of made it over here. She uh, disinfected herself and I think she's safe, but who knows for sure. But my daughter Tiffany is joining us tonight. Welcome, Hi. Tiff. Thank you. And uh, you're also going to have dinner with us, right? Of course. That's half the reason I scheduled that's this that's to the, be at five. That's <laughs> the way I see. She's figured this whole damn thing out. So, <laughs> so what we are doing tonight <clears throat> is we are going to go back and listen to the first 25 podcasts. We've, we've extracted out the underlying message that we found very interesting in all of the 25 first podcasts of season one. And we are going to kind of uh, play each clip and then we're going to do a little discussion on each clip so this should be really interesting this is technically our 34th podcast but it's going to be a recap of the first 25 so the yeah. best of the first 25 we're going to get you guys enticed to go back and listen to them yeah and there's some good ones it was really fun to go back and listen to some of them because i'd kind of forgotten some of the things that were said and it was it was interesting and it w what also was interesting was the recurring message through all 25 mm -hmm. podcasts yeah, you so. did a good job of getting, you know, really inspiring and interesting people and you got them to really like delve deep yeah. into some great topics and their personal stories. Yeah, so hopefully you'll listen to this and like Tiff said, then go back and maybe revisit a full podcast and, and really see how the uh, message came to be that uh, we chose for this for this uh, best of 25, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you ready to go? I'm ready. Let's, Let's do rehash. it. Let's do it. Here we go. Okay, our first podcast featured, of course, my lovely wife, Isabel, and uh, her podcast was The Making of an Interior Design Career and Battling Cancer. And um, <coughs> this was a great podcast to start with because it really did set the tone for our life and what we're all about. So sit back and enjoy this little clip we got right here. You know, we, we met later in life, right? Yeah. And we were just so in love. And then I think we were both wondering, like, oh, my gosh, is this going to be cut short? Yeah. Well, we, yeah, that's just it. I mean, we had several reminders on a trip to Colorado. We drove off. Uh, well, you weren't with us, but your mom, my, my two girls, and I, we drove off a cliff. Mm -hmm. And one tree just barely saved us from rolling another 1,000 feet into a lake. And this is all while you're, you know, back at the cabin thinking about what you're going to go through. And so I think we both had these stark reminders of how fragile every second is and how important it is not to sweat, you know, the recessions and the tough times. I mean, we're going to always have those. And I think you just learn that even in the midst of those tough times, you try to find the joy that is all around you if you just look for it, you know, and it's there. And I think we did that through that whole period of the 16 chemos and the 33 radiations and 
we kept living life. We did during the the cancer time, but that's how we were living before I even found out. Yeah. You and I used to say, you know what? Nothing's a guarantee. No. We're going to just do as much as we can and and live our life as happily and as loving as we can. But we did that even during that whole period. And then, yeah, we, d- we just never stopped. Yep. Do your best to stay connected because it sure makes life more beautiful. Right. That's what I find. Yeah. I mean, I will say that before I got the cancer diagnosis, I was thinking like, gosh, my life is amazing. I met my soulmate. I have a wonderful marriage. My business is flourishing. But there's something missing. And I just couldn't figure out what it was, even though I, I've been on a spiritual path since I was really young. hmm but to really take the time and be devoted to it in the way that I am now, it is, it's just made my life so rich in addition to all the wonderful worldly things that were already happening. Right. Well, so how timely is this? We're in the middle of the coronavirus crisis, and uh, <clears throat> this podcast couldn't be any more perfect for all of us going through this crisis right now, don't you think? Yeah, it's a good reminder to just not take life for granted, especially when it is really good. And, you know, during these times, m- yeah. do what you can to make the best of it. Yeah, I think we all forget how, you know, how precious life is when things are going good. I think you do take things for granted. You're just on this hamster wheel of trying to get ahead and trying to yeah. do this and trying to do that. You're and just so busy. Yeah, it's like, y- you know, your life can end in a second. I mean, there was, what, 3,200 people die of car crashes every every day in this country. So totally unexpected. Yeah. So, you know, I think to think that we're just invincible always is is just a false reality. So, so the message is take each day, take each day and enjoy it and have gratitude and yeah. and, and love Don't your family, love busy. your friends. Don't be too busy for the you know? things that matter. Take some time. So our second podcast, we packed up the podcast equipment and we went to Italy on our Candelaria Design Tour Italy. And our first interview was with Elizabeth Woolley, who hosts the houses and does our cooking class. And she's been a great friend for over 20 years. And so we'll listen to what inspired her to move to Italy. She's from America, and she runs the houses. Then we transitioned to Peter and Morgan, who on the second day of the tour got engaged. He proposed to her, and we'll listen to the joy at that very moment on the podcast. Uh, One of my clients, Catherine Ogden, Um, had this idea of buying an old ruin in uh, Umbria where she had picked olives one one season. And um, uh, several of us, she would have these parties in the Berkeley Hills and show us slides of old ruins and uh, we'd drink nice wine and everybody put in some money and she came over here, looked at 50 properties and found this beautiful house, La Pietra. Uh, She wanted a good view. And we have a beautiful oh, view. Oh, unbelievable. She also, uh, by just serendipity, I don't know, I, I need to really ask her how she found this valley. I've traveled a lot in, around Italy now. This valley is about the prettiest place I've ever it's been. It's magical. <laughs> and yesterday we, on our wine tour, I, I sat up high in the bus coming back, yeah. and I just admired it anew. It was so beautiful. Different perspective. Uh, yeah, it was... Um, I, I just feel so we, lucky. We find it to be a real healing place. It is a healing place, and yeah. And I brought so many people here over the years, and that's the one adjective they always walk away with. It's like, oh, it's beautiful and everything, but it was such a healing spot no, for no, me. No, no, it is. Right? It is, definitely. And so on the second day of the trip, we went to Villa, uh, Villa San Michele, yes. which is in the hills above Florenza. Beautiful, ultra romantic place. I mean, oh, I just yeah. think it's amazing. So, a little something happened there that night. Oh, just a little something. Just a little yeah. something. Yeah. Peter, yeah. Had, a Peter very had something nice up his sleeve, right? He, yes. had, he had something going on. So, tell us what you got going on there, Peter. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I proposed. You proposed? Yeah. It was one of those things. We were looking at pictures of all of the um, places that Mark had sent to us. And when we opened up, we, we Googled. We obviously stocked everything. Like, well, we got to know what we're doing. Right. So we Googled via San Michele, and the next thing I know, Morgan's gasping. I'm gasping. It's like, well, what the? Where are we going? Like, this is incredible. We're going there. We're going there. Like, what? So um, 
Yeah. I was like, if I'm going to propose, first of all. Well, I knew nothing about yeah, this. Not, yeah. So Evelyn in my office who puts these trips on, she gets all the credit for these trips. I just mm. show up and, and Thanks, everyone. everyone have a good time. Appreciate it. But um, she didn't tell me a damn mm-hmm. thing about this. Mm-hmm. I knew nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which and all of a sudden. impressive. All mm-hmm. of a sudden the concierge comes to me and says, uh, so where is the proposal going to take <laughs> place? Uh, I go, what, what proposal are you freaking talking about? about you know, it's like. There's a proposal tonight. So I call Evelyn. I said, Evelyn, what's going on? They're talking about some proposal. There's a photographer here. I don't know anything of what's going on. She goes, shh, don't say anything. Peter's going to propose to Morgan tonight. I go, are you kidding me? So I cornered Peter really yeah. quick. I said, hey, get over here. What, what's going on? Tell, fill me in. And you went off to the restroom, I think. Yeah. Oh, perfect timing. It was perfect timing. Yeah. So he goes, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it right now. I was like, okay, here we go. Your Italy trips are so amazing. They are fun, aren't they? Could you hear the people in the background yelling and <laughs> screaming? We were having so much fun that day. It's always the culmination of the trip. It's usually it's in the middle of the trip, actually, when we do our cooking class in Umbria. Mm-hmm. And everyone just has such a good time on that particular day. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I think it's you all come together. Like, in the beginning, it's like, fast pace, oh my gosh, all this new and stuff. And you're still trying to, to gauge Activate. everybody and <laughs> learn everybody. But once you get in that house and you're doing cooking for three or four hours, you're drinking some good wine, everyone just kind of let, lets loose, and it's yeah. just so much fun. And what about this wedding proposal? How cool uh, is that? That is so cute. And I mean, and I know them now, and they're just so cute, and that was the perfect place to propose. Yeah, Villa San Michele is beautiful, isn't it? It's so beautiful. Yeah, so we've had two proposals now on our trips, and we've had one wedding, mine and Isabel's, of course. <laughs> so who knows what's in the future, right? Who knows? You never know. So stay tuned for that. Our third podcast was with realtor Frank Azami, good friend, an amazing guy. I never knew his whole story until he told it in the podcast, but uh, talk about a guy who built an amazing brand in a short period of time. And it's mostly through hard work and just passion and engaging with his customers in a positive way. So definitely give this one a listen. This is a good one. One thing that I've noticed about you, and you kind of alluded to it a minute ago, is building your brand. And I think you've done a great job of building the Frank Azami name in town. I mean, you moved here when, and you said? And I, I uh, arrived here close to 15 years ago. Yeah, 15 yeah. years. That's not yeah. that long. No. To build yeah. what you've built. Thank you. And so... Tell me a little bit about that. Tell about the Frank Azami brand. It was never about Frank. Uh, uh, if you notice, I never use Frank Azami's group. It's the private client group because it's all about that private client. It's all about the client. It's all about yeah, cool. their need. And forget about, you know, I'm not here to take a listing and promote me through it. Right. I'm here to take the listing to show the benefits of ownership, mm-hmm. the use, um, you know, it's it's um, value. Right. Sometimes it's value for some people. Um, so it, it's and if you do everything right, it, you know, it all, it all comes to, it all oh, comes yeah. together. Yeah, I always tell people, just plant a lot of good seeds all over the place. Yes. And then you'll be amazed when you turn around how many beautiful plants you have in your garden. Exactly. So our fourth podcast featured an amazing builder who's an up and comer in the industry, Brad Levitt who has 59,000 followers on Jeez. Instagram, right? Crazy. Yeah, that's a lot. And I do see their videos all the time. Yeah, so he's done a great job of promoting his work, showing the process, and I think he's got some great tips in this ho- this podcast. Engage with them. And I think that's what y- you start to create this loyal base where they feel like, okay, They're Brad or Mark. Yeah, part of something. I, you know, I can relate, you know, the, you know, Mark, he's the, the lifestyle, you know, he's, he's a chef on the side. He has his family, you know, they travel and, and so they can relate and they can see kind of ebbs and flow of your profession. And so right. as you create that personality, and I think any of the accounts that gain the most traction are the ones that have that personality behind mm. it. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you, I, I, again, I think you've done a great job with that. And so one of the things I wanted to ask you is, you know, you're at this point where you have done that. What are some of the things you see, not only in um, construction, but in social media? What are some of the trends that you see coming that I think we can take advantage of? Because I remember in 2006, six, seven when the cell phones came out. In 2009, I started my blog. And I, you know, I wish I was a better blogger, but I'm busy doing architecture and yeah. a lot of other things. But you could see those trends coming. I remember people used to laugh at me all the time. Oh, there's the Candelaria, Mr. Facebook, you know. <laughs> I said, but they're not laughing now, you know. No, they're not. And so, you know, I think... 
it's interesting to see what's coming next. Yeah. And obviously we're doing this podcast, which I think is great because it's very engaging. It is. And what else do you see? So I see, I, I think videos, It's people are visual, right? And yeah. it's the 15 to 30 second videos. And whether you're using LinkedIn, LinkedIn has actually changed their platform. It's becoming a lot more video friendly, hmm. um, just like you see Instagram. You right. know, Instagram joined in with the I, IGTV and TikTok. And so, you know, YouTube, people are really engaged. So I see the more videos, the more content people can produce right. will be will drive their business because and, and it could be something as simple as um, drawing a sketch on a napkin. It be, could be something right. as simple as maybe saw cutting a curb, you know, to put your driveway in on a custom right. house. People people want to see that quick the process. Process. I mean, heck, my kids, I watch my kids and just kind of see their patterns. I have six of them, right? So they come home and they want to watch YouTube. They want to watch right. kids unbox their toys. And I'm <laughs> sure a lot of people can relate. They want to see slime videos, right? Right. But it, there's something about these little 15 to 20 second videos that's capturing audiences right. and all of these platforms are kind of moving towards that way. So our fifth podcast was my celebration of my 59th birthday and who else would I, I have on there but my mom, Grandma Karen, right, Tiff? Yeah. And she talked about the day I was actually born. What a day. October 13th, 1960. <laughs> huh? Yeah. World Series. World it Series. It was uh, exciting. It's nothing like being born on a walk-off home run. How's that? Yikes, you guys better listen to how it all shook out. Take us back to 1960. Well, it was a beautiful fall day in Denver, and we were watching the World Series. Your dad was always into baseball, and so we had to watch it. It was an exciting game. And Pirates I, and Yankees, if I remember right. Yes. Not that I remember it, but you've told me the yes. story. And uh, uh, you were, I was supposed to have you, you were supposed to be born a month before that. Well, here's, here, okay, let me take you there. So I was supposed to be born on September 20th, which is Isabel's birthday. birthday. And she was supposed to be born on October 13th, <laughs> which is my birthday. Right. Right? Okay, so now keep going. So when, when I started to having... I started to have some little pains, little twinges. I knew it was going to be time. and uh, But the game was so exciting, and I wasn't ready to go to the hospital yet. So we waited and waited and watched the game. And then it got a little bit hairy, where I told your dad, I think we better go. And he said, let's wait a minute. Let's wait a minute. Uh, there's one more uh, out, and... Uh, you know, then they'll, the, it'll be over. Right. Well, it, it we stayed and watched it, and it was Bill Mazeroski. Bill Mazeroski from the hit Pittsburgh a home Pirates, run right? From, from the Pittsburgh Pirates, hit, hit a home run, and that one. It was World a walk-off Series. home run. Yeah. Okay, I don't remember exactly because I was getting a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and Dad remembers it. And right after that, we went to the hospital. Yeah. And... Uh, you weren't born until 10.04 that night. That night. So then we were off to High Point, North Carolina for the, the fall market. And we had the privilege of interviewing several of my good friends who were involved in the design industry, starting with Anne-Marie Barton, who is a fabulous interior designer. And I've got the privilege now of working with her on a couple great projects, one on the East Coast and one in Salt Lake City. And her podcast was great because she understands what it means to just experience joy in everyday life, right? Yeah, and to choose joy, to make that choice every day. Yeah, and like I said in the podcast, you know, if you wake up, you're ahead of the curve right there. And so right now, with everything that we're experiencing, really, I mean, just enjoy life, okay? There's, a, there's plenty to be thankful for. Hey, about five years ago, I did a um, New Year's resolution, mm -hmm. and I took it quite seriously. I had lost a daughter, and there was a, a time of grieving, and it had been four years, and I decided I literally had to make the choice that I wanted more joy. Right. And so I wrote it down, and from that day forward, whether it was through service to others... Yep. And bringing them more joy. Yep. Literally, even the person at the grocery store, yeah, at the checkout counter. I do it all the time. I decided that I would have and bring more joy. And literally, that is is my my mantra. And I think I do start my day feeling that way and wanting yep. that for my day. Right. No, I think that's that's great. I, 
I've done the same thing through different experiences. I've, I've realized that every day is a gift. You wake up, <laughs> you're already way ahead of the curve. You know That's what I mean? True. I mean, That's true. start celebrating. I say start celebrating the second you wake up and celebrate to the end of the day. Yeah. Because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I mean, you were at our house Monday. You saw what happened. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I've been around know. you, Mark, and you do have, um, that's one of the reasons that I've um, promoted you to my clients is I like that attitude, the can-do attitude yeah. that you have. Um, almost any time there's an issue or a concern, your answers, we can do that. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I tell my kids we're candelarias, not cantelarias. I love that. <laughs> Okay, podcast number seven was also in High Point, featuring interior designer Tish Mills, who is from Atlanta, Georgia. And it was interesting talking to her about the tough times, which we're all in right now, right? Mm -hmm. And so going back and listening to these before these new tough times, it's interesting to get that perspective. Yeah, it, it's similar. I mean, the message definitely applies. It definitely resonates, right? It's mm -hmm. like, okay, have some faith. Keep going. Ignore the bad news. Get out there. Start making things happen, right? Yep. And that's what we all got to do. Yep. So you've had your challenges in life, right? Yes. And uh, it's not always easy, is it? No. And anyone who tells you they haven't is not <laughs> someone telling the truth. Right. That's what I always say. <laughs> it's, it's not that easy for anybody. Right. Yeah. So I know... You know, Isabel and I have had our have had our struggles with her health, and I've had my own issues that are podcasts in and of themselves that we'll mm -hmm. get into. But what I've kind of learned is you can't. You're going to have problems. There's going to be problems ahead of you, and there's problems behind you, and you've got to learn how to persevere, right? Most, I think a lot of it is just not quitting and just finding a way to get through it. Absolutely. Right? And knowing that you will get through you it. You will get through it's it. It's just what does the path look like? Right. And um, I Have always... Faith. Right. I always say I'm a spiritual being first and then a person walking around second, right? right. So when these things... Like, let's take this for example. When the world blew up in 2008, I yep. was going through a divorce. Yeah, me too. Well, you know, I'm telling you, we are, I'm telling you, we are definitely cousins. I mean, it was all hell broke loose. Right, didn't it? Oh, and, totally. Um, and so being an, an Italian woman, I had really never lived on my own. And here I am with three children. <sighs> right. Okay, so enough said there, right? Yeah. And so I had turned off the news because you can't handle the news while you're going, how am I going to do this? And I, I have a business to run. No. I don't either. That's <laughs> when I stopped. Well, I do. I don't watch the news. If there's something really big in the world and someone has told me, or yeah. secondly, not to go down this route, um, if it's coming up on an election, then I'll, I'll yeah. tune in. You want to be informed. But but, uh, yes, I, I am. I do want to be a good citizen. But during that period, I because I'm so spiritually based, I had the very conscious thought of, I'm not going to participate. Right. And so I people would freak out, talk about how freaked out they were during the recession, and I would just say, I'm not participating. And on our business side, we just rocked right on through. Yeah. And then just because we, I stayed very centered and kept my spiritual practice, my meditation practice, all of that very sure, forefront in my life, then, you know, I found the path. Was it hard? Absolutely. Yeah. Were there days I didn't want to do it? Absolutely. Right. But just like you, yeah. you know, you find your way through. So while in... High Point, I had the privilege of interviewing one of my good friends and clients, Jason Harris of the Design Network, of which I had a part of being, uh, have a little episode with the sketch episode. Those were so cool. They're still cool, and they still play them. I see them on Hulu every now and then. I get people texting me, yeah, I just saw you on Hulu. What's oh the deal? What's the, what the hell's going on? So it's kind of neat. And Jason Harris is just a great guy. And when you listen to his podcast and his passion for what he does, and just getting things started and not worrying about every little detail. Just get it going. Get it started. That's the key for a lot of people. The other thing is um, giving back. Yeah, you know, there you um, go. I love that. That's a huge part of my vision, even for building this home, Mark, yep. um, that I feel like that it can be um, you know, a ministry to people. It can be a way that we can you know, fundraise and, yep. and bring, uh, bring people together in, in certain ways and, and, um, and make a difference. Um, you know, I've had some tragedy in my life as well with, uh, 
you know, with some things like um, depression yeah. uh, with my, my mother. Yeah. And um, that's something I'm super passionate about is trying to, fi- you know, f- maybe shed a light on uh, mental health. Sure. Um, and uh, especially, you know, w- what I've learned about that is that um, it really affects women a whole lot more than men. And yeah. so it's something that we don't talk about a lot, but I, that's something I'm passionate about to that's try great. to make a difference in Yeah, and you can. I mean, world. I think people don't realize <coughs> – even a small gesture, small steps make a huge impact when collectively taken together with a lot of other people taking Absolutely. small steps. Yeah. And I think the, the key, just like you said in earlier in the interview, is just get started. Just right. start doing something, yeah. you know. So I commend you on that. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of, of finding ways to help other people. Yeah, and along my biggest the way. dream is just to be able to be in a place where I can go to Italy with you one Yo, day. <laughs> now you're talking. <laughs> We're definitely going to make that happen someday. Okay, podcast number nine featured. A fantastic friend of mine, Marco Felicioli from Art Italia here in Scottsdale. But he has a beautiful showroom set up during High Point Market, and he always brings in these fabulous vendors from Italy. And I just love the craftsmanship and the passion that the Italian craftsmen have. But I tell you what, they are having such a hard time marketing their products. They just don't get the whole marketing website side of things. Right. They have all these other skills that we don't have, and then they don't have the marketing to expose all their awesome skills and products, and that's kind of what they talk about in this episode. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how they all transition to using the technology, and I think after this whole scenario that we're facing now, I think Italy's going to make a big comeback. I think it's going (laughs) to make a huge comeback. I hope so. They should. Yep. Yeah, so what I always love when I come to a showroom is I, I see something new. Yeah. You always are bringing in these amazing vendors and artisans from Italy yes. that we would never see any other way. I mean, no, unless absolutely. you went to Italy and got lucky and just happened to go the right road and popped into yeah. the right factory. I mean, that's not going to happen. Not going to happen. So I think you do a great job of sourcing these amazing artisans and vendors and bring them to Scottsdale, Arizona for us. We're actually yeah. across the whole across country. Across the country. Right. We're just, ha- we're just lucky to have you in <laughs> Scottsdale. But you're doing stuff all over the country, yeah, aren't I you? Yeah, I do. And we love to eat too, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> you know that? well, I know. I, I tell people I bring a little bit of Italy back around my, mi- my waist every <laughs> every trip in the little bit i've seen in my travels to italy the the craftsmanship and the artist artistry is pretty endless to be honest with you. i mean i go from village to village and i go okay here's a guy making violins they're the most beautiful violins i've ever seen and i go to the next shop here's a guy making copper pots that are yeah. just off the charts i buy one in the last 30 years you know and it's like how c- I can't get these in the United States. I wish I could get them, you know. That, that's interesting what you said to me because a lot of Americans, when I bring them to Italy, they said to me, I'm overwhelmed about the art and everything. And I was saying before to you yeah. that, you know, when you go to Italy... It's, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Everything. And, it, and it's difficult to remember something. Right. When you go to other vendors out of Italy, they always focus and they push in a product or in something because it's the only thing they have. Right. And business-wide is very strong. That's why I think in Italy we need to reshape how we market ourselves. Yeah. And there is a huge opportunity yeah. also with the crisis because it's like it's a fact that you need to put in your business plan like the marketing tools right. and the marketing and the branding, which is like having buy a new tool or buy something tangible, you right. know, because especially marketing yep. is an intangible uh, thing. And it's so important that for Italian, it's like, yeah, but, you know, I don't need marketing. I, know, I make a great product, but it's not enough. Okay, our 10th podcast featured one of my dear friends and my barber, Bill Mc... I can never get his last name right, so I'm not even going to try. But <laughs> he is such a great guy. And right now, he is isolating himself because of the coronavirus. And so I miss him. I'm supposed to go in on Saturday. And 92 years old, cutting hair. What do you think? Wow, yeah, you told me he's like cut all these famous people's Yeah, Frank Lloyd Wright, Jackie Gleason. Uh, I mean, just didn't mention a few, but his perspective was very interesting. I know he was reacting a little slowly to my questions, but if you're 92, I mean, come on, cut him some slack, <laughs> right? He's got a lot of memories to sort through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Enjoy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're, you're always busy with your family. When I, when I come in for my haircut, you got all kinds of stories. <laughs> So uh, <coughs> now that you're in the 90s, has it always been smooth sailing? Has it life just been just easy as can be? Well, it, it has for me. Has it? But I don't think it was for my ex-wives. <laughs> well, it was kind of tough for them, huh? Well, you know, I wasn't a good boy. Yeah. 
I did I did wrong things and stayed out late at night and You were a Krauser. Yeah, I was. Yeah. But you settled down with Jane. What? You oh, settled down with well, Jane. Well, uh, so far. <laughs> There's still time, right? 40, 46 years. That's pretty good. That's, I think that's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. So um, Time's a charm. Now that's what I keep saying. Mm -hmm. All right. So what advice would you give people, both young people just getting started and those of us now closing in our 60s and beyond? What, what, would, what advice would you give the young people first? In living life and just relationships, working, Getting a job. What what are some what are some of the things you've seen in your life that you would tell someone that's twenty years old right now, getting started? I'd say make sure you get a good education. That's the main thing. Yeah. And I never did that. Right. But if I had it to do over again, I would. Yeah. But let's just assume that someone doesn't have a good education. What would you tell them? Because you still made it all work for you, even despite not having that education. Yeah. What, how how did you do that? Was it hard work? Was it well, being they, lucky? I, I'd say get a trade. Get a trade, right? Go to trade school. Yep. Or some other kind of school for. Uh, no, that's what I did. I mean, I went to drafting school and mm -hmm. you know learned learned drafting. I never I never graduated. Okay, so I obviously have a lot of great <laughs> friends, right? Uh, yep, every single one of these people. Yeah, every single one of these podcasts. Okay, and here's another great friend, Aww. Mr. Jason Barlow, who's the CEO of Habitat for Humanity, Central Arizona. And I tell you what, this guy is simply amazing, for sure. Yeah, yeah, they are. And everything that the Habitat for Humanity does is just magnificent. I mean, the work that they're doing, we're building 30 houses downtown, and uh, this guy spearheads it, the whole operation. Oh, my gosh, yeah. And, and he talks briefly in this clip about um, one of their service trips and just seeing, you know, the reactions of these kids and parents and uh, everyone in these third world countries. Well, we just take so much for granted here in this country. I mean, we uh, just assume everything is just perfect. And, and endless. And <laughs> endless. And obviously, we're being reminded of that now, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good reminder. So let's, let's all learn from that, okay? Listen to Mr. Jason. He'll, he'll set you straight. Uh, that was a cool trip. Uh, the other one I took was to Cote d'Ivoire, the Ivory Coast of Africa. Wow. There was another mission there. And we went out to villages uh, out in, I mean, the outback, out on, you know, four hours on a dirt road out to get to some of these villages. We were told we were the first white people many of the kids under, had say, 12 had ever seen, white people. Wow. And, and Habitat there is, I was just amazed. I mean, you, here it is, you know... Uh, I mean, think about the day and age we live in with cell phones and sure. technology. Habitat is uh, teaching these villagers to wash their hands and to use bathrooms and helping them with latrines and digging right. wells. Right. And uh, it was just an amazing thing to see. All the things we take for granted. All the things we take for granted, these little... But I'll tell you what, I've never been so amazed at the smiles and appreciation. There's a picture somebody took of me. I look like the Pied Piper. I'm... Walking down this dusty road, I must have 20 kids off of each of my hands. <laughs> everywhere I, I think went, I've seen that one yeah, of those pictures. Everywhere I went, the children would just follow you. Right. And they wanted to touch the. We had a couple of blonde-haired ladies. Yeah. They wanted to touch, touch their hair. hair. It was just. It was amazing, and they were so grateful. Right. For what was going and on. Happy. And happy. Oh, they're so happy. Podcast number 12 was the fabulous Phoenix Home and Garden home tour in the fall, November of 2019. And we were on the VIP tour with a great house with fabulous clients and, of course, good friends. <laughs> right? Of course. Of course, good friends. Good and clients love you. You can't, you can't beat the accolades that we got on this podcast from her. <laughs> yeah, she was definitely um, showering you with some praise. Yeah, so we had a great group of uh, guests on this particular podcast, in including... Editor of Phoenix Home and Garden Magazine, John Rourke, who uh, put the whole tour on. And it's always a pleasure to work with that whole cast and crew at the magazine there. They do such a great job every year. And this was a, this was a great event. So hope you enjoyed this podcast. Anyway, when this project started, I knew, you know, your reputation preceded you. So we knew, <laughs> Dan and I were, you know, 
expected great things, and there was you did not disappoint. Well, okay. So we would sit down at the table. I mean, it's like we I'll designed the house here at the old house. Yes, we sat down at the big farm table, yep. and it would be you and Damon yep. and Isabel. And what I remember more than anything is we had put together um, Dan and I, you know, share you know common taste, and we had pulled a million magazine pictures yeah, and circled with Sharpie what it was. And what you guys did was you took what, which I thought the brilliance, I mean, there were so many brilliant aspects, but you guys took what we, um, you create, you, we had a vision, mm -hmm. but you honed our we vision. We honed the vision, And yeah. it was like, we turned, it turned out that what we wanted was a transitional Santa Barbara house. Yeah. And that was, and it really that was what it was. And what, I, yep. what, and what I'll never forget is sitting there at the table. So Dan, me, you guys, and um, you drawing, bringing in drawings, and then sketching upside down. See? You know, just like this upside down sketching of like the beams that turned out brilliant yep. in, um, in the great room. And those moments. And there never was, like, there really never in the process was a tense moment or a cross moment. You guys were fabulous to work with. And um, that's what I remember about this project. And we love this house. There isn't a day that I'm not grateful for this beautiful home. Uh, okay, then our 13th podcast featured a wonderful guy. What a great friend, Oscar de la Salas. And I'll tell you what was so great about this one was... He came over. We recorded this whole entire podcast. I started editing it a couple days later, actually about a week week later, and screwed up something, deleted the whole file. And he was so kind. I called him and said, Oscar, you know, I can't believe what happened, but uh, I zapped your whole file. Oh, my and, gosh. And uh, he said, you know what? No problem. I'll come. I'll come over <laughs> and we'll do it again. And we did. And we had such a great time the second time. I tell you what, the second podcast was actually better than the first. And... Um, He's just a great guy. He moved here. I uh, was born in Colombia. He's been all over the world and eventually settled in Phoenix, Arizona. And his story about that on the podcast <laughs> is pretty good, right? Yeah, there's a little part that's really funny about searching for the piazza. <laughs> he was searching for the piazza in Arizona. Where By is it? Foot. <laughs> Couldn't find it. But uh, he's a great guy. And when you see what he has done w from somebody that moved here, didn't know a single person, to what he has become now, is amazing. We had the beautiful um, celebration or the fundraiser at the uh, Scottsdale Museum oh, of Mom. Contemporary Art, and he he spearheaded that entire thing and had crazy weather thrown his way, and it still came yeah. out. It came out great. Yeah, right? it was beautiful. It's a beautiful event. So here we are, Mr. Oscar. Yeah. Because uh, when I moved here, I also didn't. I didn't know anybody, yeah. and you didn't know anybody, and. I think what you said on Monday that that I think a lot of people need to realize is you didn't just stay in, in the house that you were living in and, and hide out and work on your thesis. You got out there and you met people. Yeah. And you engaged yourself with people. Yeah. And that changed everything for you. It's the curiosity. It's, it's, it's a natural curiosity of humans. Right. You try to find those people within your same premises. Right. You are the basis of who you are or what are you attracted to or your passion. Right. In my case, my passion is the world of arts and the world of architecture. So I, I found the New Times magazine that it was free uh, yep. in one of these little stands on Central, uh, oh, in, right in front of the Phoenix Art Museum. Yeah. And then at that time, um, the Ice House was just purchased by Helen Hestesness. Yes. And then they they had little salons. Yeah. I remember the uh, all the how do I say these all the artists and the yeah. intellectuals meet and have a good old time. So I used to go to the Ice House and hang out with all the artists who now are in the forefront of the world of arts in our town. Yeah, isn't it amazing how that's changed since then? Yeah, because everyone when the Ice House was first then because yeah. our office CCBG that was at we were at First Street and Garfield. Yep. And we were working on several of the buildings down there in that warehouse district. And the Ice House, we did, I can't remember exactly what we did, but we were involved in it in some capacity. Yeah. And it's just amazing how, how it's transformed and how it's going to continue. Once it builds momentum, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like to get that first little bit of momentum was so difficult. Yeah. You know, but now you see it and you can just see it go. And Old Town Scottsdale is kind of the same thing. Yeah, I think what is happening is that uh, we find centers of gravities. Yeah. And then at that point, that was the beginning of it all. Right. And, and we're so appreciative right now, or uh, I mean, 
the future generations will be appreciative that we look back into our own history and then we resuscitate those buildings that we were just leaving because right. we were going to the sprawl. We were going right, trying exactly. to find the the America, the big house in its own little property yep. and all that. You know, the dream, the American dream. But that that that. Um, a gra center of gravity, I needed it. So I, I looked for it and right. I found it. Right. So um, that was my my early days in this town. It was just trying to get to know those people. Yeah. And slowly, I just created network. So then podcast number 14 was recorded back in Italy. I went back to Italy again. I think it was the third or fourth time I was in Italy in um, 2019. And Jeez. thank thank goodness I went a lot last year because I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going this year. Uh, and you know, not to not to make light of it. I mean, it's horrible what's going on in Italy right now. It's just been just dramatic. And this this window company we toured, the Bromball Window Factory, is in northern Italy. And I've been keeping in touch with them. Last I heard a couple of weeks ago, they were all doing fine and they were working away. Oh, good. And so I need to check in again. Uh, but we were able to interview several of the people uh, on the tour, and in particular Pier Paolo of um, Bromball, one of the sons that owns the company, runs the company, his father started the company. And it's interesting to hear his perspective on how these companies in Italy are being handed down or, or not being handed down. Yeah, it seems like they're not, and that's kind of what he talks about, like especially the son just not being interested in that type of work, and yeah. then it, it ends. Yeah, th it ends. I mean, we saw that with uh, Kama Deruda and the beautiful plates and pottery. And they're trying to regenerate with the next generation, but it's so hard, and... You know, there's so much debt in that country, and I'm just afraid a lot of the arts and a lot of the craftsmanship that we enjoy from mm -hmm. Italy, be it food, be it textiles, be it windows, be it pottery, slowly it's die slowly out. dying out. Yeah, so you talk about that a lot. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of sad, and I, I hope that the next generation can embrace some of these beautiful uh, parts of their culture. Thank you. And so your family, your father that started this company? My father founded the company in 1970. Okay. But he started to work as a craftsmanship metal work when he was uh, 14 years old. Wow. When uh, my grandfather, so his father, passed away, he was the only boy with uh, four sisters and a mother. Wow. So he had to leave the school and go back to work. Uh, and he's where? We start to learn about steel. He start to learn about steel. Yeah. And uh, transfer this this passion and love to us. Huh. I start to work in the factory, very small factory. I was 14 years old too. In the summer after school. Nice. And, uh, we cannot enjoy the summer, but he was telling us, "Come on here to help." <laughs> so, well, I think uh, that's what's neat. I I've seen a lot of companies in Italy that I've known. I've been coming here for 20 years, and. Some, uh, it's very sad for me to see some of the companies not make the transition from generation to generation with some of these arts. Like in, there's a family in Deruta that makes the beautiful pottery and the plates, and they closed. They, the, the children this did not want to do it. In Veneto region, in this part of Italy, the transition uh, between the father and the son yeah. is one of the biggest issues. In because, a, lot of, a lot of companies, right? Yes, because yes. Uh, a lot of the first generation... Uh, for who founded the company is hard to transfer their heart and their love right and the hard work and the hard work and the hard work to other generation also if they are the son right and this part of the uh, fail of many Veneto region companies hmm. high quality companies yeah our 15th podcast featured Kent Wellborn, who is my insurance guy. I mean, he runs the insurance for our company. He's helping us with our buy-sell. And he's a great friend. Him and his wife went on our Spain tour in 2019. And, um, you know, during the course of all these podcasts, I'm pretty amazed at how many of the people that I interviewed did not have college educations or college degrees. Yeah, I know. You do bring that up in your podcast. And it's quite a few. Quite a few of them did not have that. And Kent Wellborn and I both share that uh, characteristic, and we both talk about the imposter syndrome that we both kind of suffered from in our early career, and it's mm -hmm. something that just never does really go away, I don't <laughs> think. Yeah, well, you guys felt like you had to prove it because you didn't have the degree to prove it. And yep, and we're still, we're still trying to prove it. <laughs> well, you're doing good. You know, for really probably the first 
few years of my career, I treated it like an acting job because you got to figure I was a bike messer in New York <laughs> yeah. City. Like I had no college education, right. no skills. Yep. I had um, a ton of fear around what they call the imposter syndrome. Yep. Have you heard of that oh, before? Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I had the same problem because I, yeah. didn't, I, didn't, I didn't finish college. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> and I'm dealing with all these, you know, highly qualified architects that totally. are with master's degree that were my, they were my subordinates. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and they were older and smarter mm-hmm. and I was their boss. Absolutely. You so, feel like the imposter. You, you really do feel that, and you feel like some somebody's just going to take the cane out, right. you know, and yank you off the stage right. and say, "What are you doing there?" So, yeah. so yeah, I mean, it's definitely a part that's ingrained into my daily life and really helped me survive and prosper in the first few years of my career. Interesting. So, do you have a degree? No, you don't. I do not. You and I are the same. I have no college degree. I actually went to um, ASU, and this was uh, a few years ago, and I thought, well. I've got to have enough credits from community college right. and, and then also my credentialing. Right. So as a certified financial planner, credit estate planner. Yeah, so you took all, took all the exams. You've done all the stuff. Totally. I've got yeah. all those. And so I go in there and, and they're like, you need, I think it was something like 120 hours <laughs> of college credit or something. And I had like 150. I was like, okay, well, give me my degree. Right. And they're like, well, wait a minute. It doesn't all add up the no, right way. No, it doesn't because yeah. half of them are in acting, <laughs> half of them are in finance. You got to do all this gen ed. And I just said, you know, I'm hey, you could have been a politician with, that, with those right? credentials. I totally could have. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no degree, just a, a bunch of designations. And, and you know, I, I will say this, too, about I don't know if you experienced this at all, Mark, but because I didn't have the college education, it made me work that much oh, harder. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right? I wasn't going to let anyone prove me wrong. Totally. Yeah, I worked my butt off just like you for, for many years. I still work my butt off. Yeah. I still, I still have that fear. It's different. Right. You know, and it's not about being an imposter because I've obviously earned my credentials. But I think that just has gotten so ingrained in, in my way of doing things that I'm never going to let them catch up to me. Yeah, you know, totally. It's almost like there's this um, – it used to be in the beginning the fear of – am I going to make my mortgage payment? Right. You know, and I remember in the very beginning, like, you know, scrounging for gas money or <laughs> a vet bill. Right. Um, now I don't have that fear, but I still have the fear that keeps me on the edge, which is I never want to become irrelevant. Right. I never want to get to a point where I'm not bringing the best and brightest ideas to the table. So right. that's what keeps me on edge keeps now all the time. And so I think I've just been wired in this way of like, I've got to do, got to do, got to yeah. do, got to do. So podcast number 16 features a very talented person, Mr. Evan Delaney and his son Christian, who are both the gentlemen who make my fabulous jackets that I love oh, to wear, right? <laughs> I mean, they've got the ones now where he's lining the insides of my jackets with, with pictures of my houses. <laughs> yeah, it's like a lot of pictures of your house. Yeah, so it's like a, a basically a, a wearable brochure. It so is, I yeah. love that. <laughs> but the guy is so positive, and his son is amazing. So we had a lot of fun recording this, this podcast. And again, this one really showed you sometimes you just got to dive in. Don't pl- you know, you can plan as forever. You can plan all the details, but if you don't pull the trigger, it doesn't matter. And sometimes you just got to get things yeah, going. Just get going. Um, I started I started my business when I was 20. Wow. So, and You're I'm brave. Oh, ugh, dumb. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say. Be- Desperate. Here's here and you bring up cuz I've been thinking about this a lot. Yeah. Being dumb, if you use it to your advantage, is oh, a really good thing. I've used it for 30 years. It really works <laughs> out well. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's great. And sometimes if you knew everything you knew, you would never take the chance. Oh, yeah. No. No. Right. It just... Just go. Oh, yeah. That's what I did. So it yeah. was it was uh, out of necessity, um, but it, it, it's it's always been a joy for me. Yeah. No, yeah. I can tell. Just the first time I met you, I go, okay, this is this is the guy I'm working with. I loved it. I loved meeting, yeah. we, meeting you. I remember, I remember when we met the first time. And then uh, throughout all of our years together, I've um, you've uh, you've been loyal, and uh, I've referred you to wow, a lot of good you people. You have, too. I'll say you have. I yeah. owe you a lot. So podcast number seventeen featured the fashion model and business lady extraordinaire Clarissa Burt, who also has that sh- same passion and, and love of Italy that I do. Did you see a pattern here? Yep. I yep. See a pattern. There's definitely a pattern. I I love Italy and I love. I love people who love Italy, and um, she definitely gets it, and I look forward to the time that I can return there 
Not as a tourist guide or a <laughs> tour guide. You are such a tour guide when you're there. Yeah, but wouldn't it be nice if I could just go there, like I say in this podcast, and just relax for a week or two? Yeah, and just without 20 cameras around your neck? Be, it'd be fantastic, right? Yeah, you should do it and bring me. I, I think love I love, it. And, I, and I love Italy. So those. So are how often are you in Italy? As twice as a year, about twice a year, twice I a get year. there. They just asked me if I would, and I'm getting called now to kind of do consults, if you will. So yeah. this guy's got a movie out in the Hollywood. So when you go, how long are you there? I was there this time for two weeks. Okay. The last time I was there, it was a month. Okay. Um, you know, the problem with Italy that I is a problem, not problem, is by the time you get there and let everybody know you're there. Right. And something actually happens, like yeah. a dinner or a lunch date or something, you're leaving. Yeah. You know, so you have to give a little uh, headway or stay a little extra time when you're there, yeah. which is what I normally do. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're trying to transition more into. We have our tours, and right. we're just go, 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 go. Right. Uh, and what we're trying to do now is spend there a, a week before. Oh, well, yeah, a week before, a week later, or a week later and just, do a nice and just chill, you somewhere. know. Yeah. yeah, so I can go down to the market right. and actually buy yeah. my food and, right. and really be an Italian yeah, for a yeah, week, yeah. <laughs> you know, not just a tourist guide. <laughs> exactly. So... Our 18th podcast featured realtor Elliot Barkin and his wife, Corinne Hale. We're doing a beautiful house with them right now in Paradise Valley. But I think it's great to hear his perspective of the 2008 crash uh, when we recorded this prior to what we're going through now with the uh, coronavirus and the fallout the, the economy is experiencing. Um, I think it's interesting to listen to that podcast in light of what we're seeing today. So give it a listen. During the crash, I was fortunate not to be fully full time invested. Um, right. I was still kind of in my learning phase of yep. learning off other people's projects and the sales side of it. So it was it might have been a good thing that I wasn't. I right. jumped in in 2006, 2007 because by the time it was 2009 and 10, um, it was the a carnage was time, yeah right? the it carnage was, was already out there at right. that point. And it it made me look at everything in a very conservative mindset because I saw how terribly a lot of people got how devastating it was yeah um so it was i think overall it was uh, a good lesson to me during yeah. those years yeah and you told me last time i mean you had a story i forget you were on a flight or on a plane or something like that yeah, well there's two stories okay the, the one i think the stories. one you're thinking about was the original mentor who i mentioned and right. i started with uh in 2006 he was really uh mid-level successful realtor he had a great income and a family will buy 2008 he was divorced and took his own life um yeah. and his business crashed and it was just very eye-opening and you were that. right there involved in that whole oh i was you were right there i was right there i fortunately wasn't financially vested, vested as much as someone like him was at the time right but i it, but you it, saw what that can do oh man it was it was eye-opening and it allowed me to take an approach still today that's very conservative yeah. and, and see how you have to always look ahead and, and be prepared yeah. for things the can go but Things can go bad quick. Right. But that was, you know, as bad as that situation was um, and hard, it was I kind of, at that point, I could I could close up shop or stop, but w at that point, I started my own team then, and I was a senior in college, and it allowed me to branch off and push forward and, and go into the new market with right. a good, I think, a good perspective. Good perspective, on, for sure. Uh, our 19th podcast was Letitia Fry. She is called an auction tainer. Um, she's an amazing auctioneer, and her story was so crazy. Um, this podcast, she talks about so many things that have happened um, in her life and just overcoming them and, like, all the lessons she learned from them. It was it's a really powerful, interesting, captivating podcast. I think it was one of our best podcasts to. that we had of the year. I loved it. And it was a great one because it, it finished. It was the last one of 2019. And it, I thought the message was so great and so, again, so apropos to what we're going through right now. Totally. And I think that's one thing I would tell people to do with this extra time that we have is take a little good, hard look at yourself and your life, mm -hmm. you know. And maybe this is the perfect reset we all need. <laughs> I think it is. So take the time to listen to this podcast and then think about all these messages. Yeah, go back and listen to this one for sure. We attract whatever you're doing and thinking, you're attracting more of. Right. And again, that's why I said be careful what you put out there. Um, try to come from a place of love. And the first place you can come from a place of love is for yourself. Yeah. I, I know that right now it's kind of PC to say self-love, but I can guarantee you that if you ask someone to define it, most people cannot. Self-love equals self-care. What is that? It's time for yourself. Yeah. Time. Yep. So your message is amazing. I Thank love you. this so much. 
What I want to know is what's next for Letitia. So um, I have a book coming out. In okay. fact, I was fortunate enough in um, Scottsdale Lifestyle Magazines just did a whole summer reading thing because my book comes out on July 6. It's called No Reserve, which is an auction terminology. And for those of you listening, what it is is everything I learned through all these adversities, I mm -hmm. wrote down, and I basically tried it on 65 different people I mentored. It works. So I came up with practices and methodologies that awesome. I teach in the book on basically what's meant by a no reserve. If you're in an auction and you put a reserve on it, it means a price you won't go under. Right. So my book opens up at an auction, and you're sitting there, and you're like, wow, I wonder what they're going to auction. And the first item that comes up is your life. Awesome. I love that. And yeah, we want to think, I wonder if you lived your life right yep. in order for it to go to high the bid. highest bid. <laughs> and the question for that is, what reserves did you put on it? In other words, where are you selling yourself short? Yeah. If you tell life, well, I'm only willing to do this, right. then that's all that's you're going to get. Okay, our 20th podcast was basically a podcast that I recorded on my own, which was just the one to start off the new year 2020. <clears throat> Little did I know what kind of year this was going to be. Uh, but we did draw the winner for our June Spain tour, which obviously now we've postponed. He couldn't go anyway, but little did we know none of us can go now. So it's just this whole year is starting off so bizarre, isn't it? It's just, just totally crazy. Um, so anyway, no clip on that one. We're going to jump right to podcast number 21. Our 21st podcast featured a person that Isabella and I dearly love, Jennifer Gage of Gigi's Playhouse. And we had the blessing of designing her beautiful home in Silverleaf and then work with her in the creation of Gigi's Playhouse, cafe, and university. What an amazing lady. And another great example of someone who had a dream, had a vision, had a passion, and just got it started. Yeah, this podcast episode and her are really inspiring, and um, Gigi's Playhouse is um, a place for kids with Down syndrome, and she actually has a daughter who has Down syndrome, and that's kind of what sparked it all, so yep. she talks about all that. And more, and she's now started Stretch Lab, and I tell you what, she's just an, she's just an energetic lady who just gets things done, and I love that about her. We got together, um, Leslie, uh, Val Schlesinger, and I got together, and we put together a startup committee and started fundraising yeah. and, and putting it together. Within 18 months, we opened, as you know. Uh, you guys designed the, the initial playhouse, and Isabel um, did the interiors, and it was just such a warm and welcoming and, and, and something that no one had. Right. No one had what we were offering. And um, and it was really, <laughs> I, I don't know how we did it. <laughs> but <laughs> just happened. <laughs> we d yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it, that's what I've learned in life. Sometimes yeah. you just, the hardest part, a lot of times, is just getting started. Yeah. You know, it's like Ed Milet always says, you, you can't drive a parked car. No. You know, so it's like, get the car moving. You don't know where it might go. You have a vision of where it's going to go. That's right. But you just get it going. You no, know. and I think that's sort of the, the, the story of my life is just <laughs> building the plane while we're flying it. <laughs> you have to, right? <laughs> right. So. I mean, I see so many people that just sit there and plan and plan and never pull the trigger. And it's like, yeah. just pull the freaking trigger and go, right. you know? And that's, well, what I, that's what I love about you, is yeah, you do pull the trigger. I, I do. I mean, I think that, you know, my, my, my feeling was that if... If we could build it and we could right. show people what we do, right. they're going to want to get involved. They're going to want to fund it. But I if we're just telling people about it, we're talking about it, yeah. then it's not really real. Right. So let's just get it done yep. and, then, and then they'll get it. Podcast 22, one of my favorite ASU stars, ASU football stars, Juan Roque. And I'll tell you, this is one big dude. I mean, he <laughs> is a big dude. But I'll tell you what's even bigger than his size is his heart. Yeah, and his passion and just his energy. Yes, actually, yeah. yes. I think it would be so. It would have been so fun to play football with that guy because I, I tell you, in that hour podcast, I was ready to go play football right then. Yeah, he, he had me about so fired up. So many different things, like yeah, like his heart and like learning and growing up and all that kind of stuff. And teamwork. Teamwork is so important. There's so much in sports that you can apply to business. Oh, absolutely. And as you have a team, and yep. I see the way you guys go to Europe, you guys are always together. Yep. It's the same thing in a locker room. It's no different than in an office setting. What are the differences? Well, yes, you're, you're sweating and you're, you're getting beat up by coaches and you're conditioning to play a football game. But in the corporate world, and I apply this in my job as well, is you have to have that attitude of oneness. Right. We are one. A team. We're one mind. We're a team. Yep. We're one heart, one body. We're going in one direction. 
And if you get people to buy into that, amazing things will happen. Totally. You know, what, the most successful businesses are usually built on that premise. You got to yeah. be a team. Yep. You got to be one. You got to believe in one another, have each other's backs, and make sure that everything that you do every single day is to better for that mission. The, the whole. Then we move to podcast number 23 featuring Renee D of Iconic Life magazine and great friend. I have a lot of great friends, right, Tiff? <laughs> they are all great. <laughs> they are all great. And uh, her clip from the podcast was pretty catching. You actually pulled it out because yeah, she talked about one. a she talked about a trip that she went where she shut her cell phone off for a for a week, I think. Yeah, it was at least a week, but it was in Fiji, so you know, that's a that's a good place to do that. Maybe so. I don't know if I could do a week. You couldn't, and that's why I picked this clip because <laughs> you couldn't do a day. <laughs> When I do travel, I'm a big compartmentalizer. You know, mm -hmm. some people say, oh, I'm never off. I'm never off my cell phone or whatever. Yeah. If I'm going to travel, I'll make sure that everything's covered. I make sure that Spencer is, you know, in good hands or yeah. whatever. And I just put my phone away. Hmm. I mean, sometimes I just have to do that. That's and good. it's, um, yeah, I, I did an unplugged trip once. Um, I went for six days. Wow, um, that's a long time. Fiji alone. Wow. Um, and I made a commitment that I was going to turn off my phone. So as soon as I landed... I turned you off my phone. Down. So it was so six. So how was that? It was incredible. You know, it's interesting because the first day, it's almost like having an addiction, right? right. You think, oh, I want to call people. I want to text people. Right. Like, you want to just like get to that phone. And so you have to just, you know, commit that you're not going to do it. But I kind of let myself wind down. And then the next day, so I was. So what did you do that first day? So the first day I walked around a lot. I thought, you know, I'm just going to walk everywhere and leave my phone and just kind of walk this off. And, and then um, the next day I was on, you know, Fiji time. Yep. But I woke up at like 2.30 or yep. 3 o'clock in the morning. And I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go sit out on my back, um, the patio, yep. the terrace that was overlooking the water. I'm going to sit out there in the dark and I'm going to light a little candle and I'm going to watch the sun come up. And it was so amazing that that's what I did for the next six days while I was there. And again, like I said, I took a solo trip because I yep. had kind of a specific, um, it was for my 50th birthday. And I had a specific thing I wanted to do for myself, but I specifically wanted to go alone. Yeah. And um, by the second day, I wasn't even thinking about my phone. But when you don't talk to other people, right. and when you aren't engaged in your phone, right. you start thinking about things that, right. you that you don't have time to think about. And you just start going deep. And I had some incredible epiphanies by the end of the trip i'm like wow our 24th podcast featured derek andre of cyber group and uh, he kind of went through all the technology and all the cool stuff that's going on with av but i tell you his message again for the 2008 period again is so apropos to what we're going to be going through here and he talked about building those relationships working hard and I'll tell you what, guys, that's that's definitely it. It's going to be tough, and you got to get out there and make it happen. Yeah, the economy so was pretty good in 2001, and you rode the wave up to 2008. Yeah, and then, uh, it, you know, suddenly in 2008, the, the lights turned off. <laughs> yeah, pardon the pun, right? Yeah. Yeah, so tell me about that. I mean, you, how did you, what did you learn, and how did you learn, and how did it grow? Um, I mean, the, the thing with with John and the business was that we uh, had some real relationships with uh, some key builders, and even through the times where things were, you know, some, somewhat slowing down, we were able to keep growing, keep hiring new guys, keep doing more work, and just you know, just kept our hood, head down and worked and hard. It. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you said a key word there: the relationship aspect of businesses is so important. I mean, I think people don't realize that part. I think mean, a lot of people work and they do their job and but you got to get out there and you got to meet people and I know John's done a good job of that. You're always at events, you know, networking and, and meeting people and you, you've got to do that. Yeah, it's 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 a critical portion I think of of just uh, you know, that, that someone can remember who you are, but if if you're not in their mind as far as someone that they uh, f trust and that they they want to be uh, a friend with almost right uh they may not always or put in front of one of their clients correct yeah. so we made it through all 24 podcasts and our 25th one i thought was the perfect one to end on our 25th note with artist nikki waller and her story which i thought was fantastic oh, and yeah. and you know it's again it's moments like this that we're going through where i think we all have to just jump off the hamster wheel and take a hard look at our lives and what we're doing and where we're going and assess assess things. Yeah, and, and listen to that inner voice and those little nudges because that's what Nikki did and 
she wouldn't have been an artist if it weren't for that. Right. It changed her whole her whole life. Yeah, it's it's a crazy story. Give it a listen. We lost one of our employees who was, you know, a good friend. He mm-hmm. fell asleep at the wheel and he died. Hmm. And so I went to his funeral and it was a beautiful, beautiful day and I didn't have kids, so I had a cute little roadster and I had the roof down on the car and as I was driving I was sad thinking that, you know, Michael should have been here. Hmm. And and just, you know, he fell asleep and how dumb. Right. And then this voice in my head, I was driving past Michael's. This voice in my head said, Hey Nick. You should stop and get some paint and some canvases and some <laughs> brushes. And but you've never done that before. No, never. Ever. I'd hated art before yeah. that. I thought it was just, d- d- why would anybody do that? But the voice was so loud and so clear. Yeah. And I was driving right past Michael's, so I actually like turned in, and I walked in, and I grabbed a bunch of canvases. And I didn't know what I was doing. I just grabbed colors and canvases and a bunch of brushes. And I remember I had the roof down. I had the little BMW Z Roadster. So this tiny little thing. And I had canvases the like size of those. Sticking out of the back. Sticking out of the back. And I drove home and I painted my first painting. And wow. I was lucky enough to live next to an art professor from ASU. Interesting. So I knocked on her door and I asked her to come over and take a look at what I had painted for her some critique. Mm-hmm. And she walked in and she looked at it and she said, that's your first painting. And I said, yeah, I've never done. And she turned around and she started to walk away. And I, and I said, wait, it's that bad? You've got nothing to say? No, she decided to go into advertising after <laughs> that and marketing. <laughs> no, then she looked at me and she said, I don't want to guide you in any way. You have a natural talent. You just keep painting and don't stop. Amazing. And she turned around and walked out the door. And so. This um, all sounds like very divine intervention. It really does, doesn't yeah, it? Totally. Yeah. All right, we did it. 25 Ooh, podcasts, hoo. the best of the first 25. They were great, Dad. Weren't they awesome? Yeah. And so um, we are. In, this is actually going to be podcast number 34 that you're listening to right now. And we are uh, in our sixth month of podcasting. Mm-hmm. And we have had thousands of downloads, which is pretty amazing, right? Yeah, I'm, I am mean, impressed. So I really want to thank all the listeners. I really want to thank all of you who have written reviews. They've been fantastic. And we've got some great guests coming up. And, and to all the great friends of yours. Oh, yeah. I've got so many great friends, which I <laughs> truly, recorded. I am really blessed. I do have some great friends. And, you do have a lot. And I, I love it. And I'll tell you what, <clears throat> you know, I'm a news junkie. I, I watch the news and I'm, I'm burnt out on it. I mean, you know, it's so negative. I don't care what side of the coin you listen to. They're both horrible. And I think it's time to just start inspiring yourself, assessing yourself, taking some time to look at your life. And our podcast, Inspiring Living, I think if you go back and listen to the podcast, I think they all do it in their own unique way. Yeah, and that really is um, the theme of your podcast. And, you know, you tell people that before they come on, so they kind of alter their story to fit that. And it's been really inspirational. Yeah. So I think take some time every day to either listen to some of ours or some of the other ones, some of, um, of the other great podcasts that are out there. There's so mm-hmm. many of them. Yeah. I and get off the uh, negative hamster wheel because it's, it's just horrible. Yeah. You know, maybe tune in, see what the latest stats yeah, but are. But don't obsess with it. Look on the internet. Don't even turn on the TV. <laughs> yeah. So our podcasts, you can find them on iTunes. Obviously, you found this one. It's on Buzzsprout, but you can go to our our website. Definitely go to our website because every single podcast episode has its own page where we kind of rehash what the podcast is about and um, what they talk about. And there's also pictures and there's links to, um, you know, follow that person or their company. So if you liked a podcast, there's so much more content online to like really see and and join in take it to a whole another level yeah yeah so another thing i want to just thank all of the guests who participated in the first 25 podcast amazing people amazing friends (laughs) uh but no thank you for all the time because i know like for instance oscar de la salas i know uh elliot barkin and corinne had to come in twice because their situation changed oscar's audio got lost Mm -hmm. so thanks to all you guys You're, you're all fantastic people you all inspire me every single day and i love going back and listening to some of these especially (laughs) later it's interesting to see how time 
Um, yeah, it changes your perception. Changes of your message. perception of the message. Yeah, especially yeah. with everything, like I said, that's going on now. It's really interesting to hear it. And I think what'll be interesting is to listen to this podcast, you know, six months down the road. Absolutely. Yeah. Next year, they're here for you, people. Yep. <laughs> Stay tuned and keep living, inspiring living, guys. I want to say a big thank you to my good friends at Stock It Tile and Granite Company, where your project is our priority. The Stockett team, along with so many others, are coming really close to the finish line in our demonstration kitchen and our new expansion of our candelary design offices. I've had the pleasure of working with the Stockett team for nearly 40 years on some amazing projects, and trust me, they are the epitome of excellence when it comes to tile, marble, and granite work, bar none. Their skill and customer service is impeccable, and the bottom line is, they are just good people. I have traveled with, dined with, and just had good times both personally and professionally with Dave Stockett and his lovely wife, Becky, and they are the best. When it comes to your next kitchen, make sure Stockett Tile and Granite is part of your team. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed our podcast. We encourage you to write a review, screenshot it, and share it with your friends. Please instant message it to me and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We thank you for listening, and we look forward to sharing more insights to inspiring living next week.